Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. Well, we're going to play a symphony. Every time I hear that name, I always think of that. But I'm so fortunate to be able to interview Andrea uh, Abbott, who is the Regional Vice President for Sales and Marketing for Milestone Retirement Communities, and Dawn Gazetta. But actually, we're here talking about something specific, and I mentioned the name Symphony, and uh, we know that there are a lot of symphonies around, but this is a community, a symphony community in Delray Beach, as well as one, uh, they have them in Boca, and they have them, um, actually, they have them all over in South Florida, but I want to specifically talk about the one in Delray, because that's the one that I have visited, which is almost open, probably if I take a deep breath, it'll, you know, I can imagine before opening how everything's (laughs) finalizing. But Andrea, uh, you're being down here, of course, you're all over the country. And I asked you how you got into this. And and, um, I think it's very interesting that, and I think you'll agree, you have to love this business to be in it. Absolutely. So I've been in the business about 12 years. Um, Really interesting. So a lot of administrators and executive directors currently in the business kind of fell into it through skilled nursing. I, uh, as a younger generation and truly a millennial, I made my path into senior living. I wanted to work with seniors. I fell into an opportunity while I was doing my undergraduate studies where I took part in a merge between a hospital and a senior living continuum. They built a CCRC and I thought, what a wonderful concept. So I went on to get my master's in health administration I forged a new path in my master's degree program specifically for senior living. And now at Cornell's Sloan program in health administration, they graduate two to three students each year who enter the senior living industry. So big passion of mine. I love working with older adults and I love working in South Florida. So it's a great combination. And Dawn, so how about following up with that too? Because I know that you've been there at Symphony from the very breath that they even breathe this that there was going to be a symphony there right (laughs) yes yes i have um first of all i have a uh, deep passion for delray beach i served on the delray beach housing authority for 10 years so i've totally seen the uh, resurgence of atlantic avenue starting in the east and now going a little bit further to west i'm thrilled to pieces to see a community right here in what I call downtown uh, Delray, where it's uh, sorely lacking. I have done a lot of real estate development in my background and also have been in the health and wellness uh, field of advertising for a long time. So merging all of that together has been a real gift in being able to be uh, on this project from the startup. Well, I like all those, uh, both of you with your credentials because I have always felt, since I've been doing this a long time, I felt that, and that's why I started myself, I felt that the senior population were not appreciated and they were not being taken care of the way they should. In fact, my grandmother, when I lived in Miami Beach, my grandmother lived in probably one of the first retirement communities that was, I don't know, it was 20 stories high down on uh, in, in um, Miami Beach. And she was there and she lived in one room, but she had all the services and she had everything. And when you went there... She was too busy for you to talk with her because she had to play her cards and do everything else. (laughs) That's great. But she lived to be 95. So I knew that that was the answer, but a lot of people didn't know how to manage this. And over the years, I've seen some extraordinary developers come out of this. Now, the ones that didn't do a good job, they're gone. (laughs) Mm. And I'm sure you would agree with me, uh, Andrea, that it takes... A lot of careful thinking, and what I'm so thrilled about is something that your company is going to be doing, which is extraordinary. Thank you. No, I could totally agree with that, and it's a really hot investment field, believe it or not, right now. A lot of uh, foreign and Asian, specifically Chinese investors, are putting a lot of money into building senior living communities like ours and investing in companies that are tried and true. Uh, We are not foreign owned or invested. It's a privately held company, but we're national with over 92 communities coast to coast in the United States. And we're really excited about this new portfolio in Florida. You mentioned a few others. Delray is the last of five new properties we've built in Florida to open, which hopefully will be opening in June, possibly July, you know, with construction. But we're really hopeful and looking forward to our upcoming opening. 
And if I ask you what makes it different, uh, you just told me about having a whole con uh, consortium of medical people right there as part of it, which I think is has been sorely missed. Absolutely. I mean, uh, senior living changes. Um, we have a really great concept where we incorporate supportive independent living and assisted living will be licensed by the state of Florida as an assisted living community, but it's blended. So it's a great opportunity for seniors who want a little bit of service, don't want to live in their home anymore, and even those who can't live in their home anymore and really have to make a move to a community. So there's a great uh, variety of options. We also offer memory support, supporting those with dementia, Alzheimer's, um, and a smaller, more secure environment with a variety of programming. We actually call our program in the moment because it's a very flexible and updated version of what we've been providing in dementia and Alzheimer's care for years, but a very modern and holistic approach. You're naming, you must have someone working for you. You deal with an agency. <laughs> We're so great at names. That's a, oh, that's just wonderful. Thank you. Um, I wanted it, and I know you're going to appreciate this. When someone wants to move in to a beautiful community like yours, the first thing they want to know is about food, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so tell me what you would tell them. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to let Dawn field this. Dawn is our director of sales and marketing at Symphony at Delray Beach. And she's actually had the pleasure of we've already hired our chef. He's on board and he's creating the menus and we're talking about our concepts. So go ahead, Dawn. Well, one of the things we're so thrilled about with our um, director of dining is, uh, first of all, he speaks several languages. So he will be uh, cooking in all kinds of international <laughs> flair, uh, which we're thrilled about, and um, bringing a lot of uh, holiday uh, celebration to the community. He also has experience in cooking kosher, which for our clientele is going to be uh, quite exciting. We have something called all-day dining. If you compare us to the traditional um, senior leaving community, you find what is um, 7.30 to 9 a.m., 11.30 to 1 for lunch, and unfortunately people queuing up at 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, the all line up, right? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> so that they can be done by 6 o'clock. Um, this is what scares people away about leaving their homes. We um, offer any meal any time of the day from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. So if you sleep late or if you're still driving and going to play golf or back to your old community for bridge and don't get home until maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you can still go in and have lunch. And this is just so appealing to everyone who still is independent or wants to feel independent that they can really just come and go as they please and enjoy um, dining in not only any time of day, but in one of two or three different locations within the building. We have a cafe bistro, we have lanai dining right on our beautiful courtyard, and then we have what we call our traditional dining room. I don't want to call it a formal dining room because you don't need to wear jackets, you know, to eat, but um, several different locations to enjoy eating at yeah. any time of day. I'm glad you described that. And, and I want to actually ask Andrea, now that we talked about that, um, in all your communities, mm -hmm. what would you say is, besides having now your medical, um, your medical um, area or, or part of it, what do you think is the most important area? Do you think activities are? Mm -hmm. Do you think the environment? What do you think it is? Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is more than just me, of course, but, uh, you know, we find activities and dining are the number one and two things in any community that to be successful can be the most beautiful brand new community like ours and a great location. But if you don't have those two departments on point, it really impacts the residents. Um, the majority of the day is spent either conversing and eating with friends in the dining room or involved in an activity if you're not in your apartment. So we've hired some great people. We're really excited. Um, and that is one of our cornerstones for Milestone is we really believe in providing support to those departments and offering robust programming and options to provide consistency and really quality services. That's good because they otherwise they ought to just stay home. Yeah. You know, the reason they're going and the reason I always encourage people to go to the senior communities is because they're, they are going to stay younger. 
they are going to make new friends. Mm-hmm. They're go- their, their life's going to be provided in a very different way. And I know enough from reading about Symphony that you are really on the cutting edge. This isn't one of the old places that people that have been there, and they do a good job, but your company apparently is really reaching far. Sure. We really believe in the engagement of our customers. And, you know, one of our greatest clients in the assisted living industry is the adult children who are making decisions and doing the preparations and shopping for mom or dad who, you know, let's face it, people don't want to leave their homes. They've built memories there. They're comfortable. You know, assisted living and even supportive independent living is about making a lifestyle choice, just as you said, that's going to lengthen your lifespan and hopefully improve the quality of your life. So we want to build an environment that's as wonderful as possible when you're forced to make that tough decision. You know, that's that's so well said. So, Dawn, I want to just share something with you and Andrea that my mother uh, lived in Miami Beach. And then when she I knew she was just lonesome after my father died. And I suggested that she go, it's before, this is that back in 2003, so you weren't around. I would have suggested she go there. But I went to some other, I helped her go to a gorgeous place in Fort Lauderdale. And um, my mother never really had girlfriends. She had my father. And the first thing I noticed is as she was there, she was holding hands with another woman. And she had a best friend at the age of 85. Isn't that beautiful? It's unbelievable. I was just at one of my other communities on Monday, and one of our newest residents rolled up to the executive director's office in her wheelchair, and she was being pushed by a very independent resident. And so they they came to us and they said, can you believe how wonderful this is? I just met this other woman a few days ago. So happy she moved here. She's from England. I'm from Canada. We're both from foreigners from out of the side of the United States. And I just love her. And to see that connection happen in front of you is so unbelievable. And it's really tough for people like Don and I to sell that and, and make people believe that in the sales process because we know it's true. But unless you experience it firsthand, it's often difficult to, to understand that. But we see it every single day. And one thing, when I uh, when I was first talking with with your folks over there at um, Symphony, I guess it was one of them, six months or even before, they were very careful to talk about this not being um, assisted living. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I really appreciated what what they said, and it was the story is it's it's really a senior community, and whatever mm-hmm. you need, we're going to be able to fulfill it. Do you? And isn't that your philosophy? What a better way to say it, because a lot of people say, I don't want to go there. That's not, you know, I don't want to tell my friends I'm living in a place like that. Yeah. But now, if, like, for some point, maybe they're doing fine and maybe they slip and fall, and now they need something more, but then they want to come back the way it was. And now, with your medical team, you can supply all of that. I mean, I think you're just going to go gangbusters. I am so happy that you're here to share this with us. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the industry and what our organization is doing is really outpacing our terminology, if you will. No one loves the term assisted. And, you know, we certainly understand that the folks that we're reaching out to don't want to be labeled as assisted, nor would I. I can't change the government's terminology or how we're licensed. But what you said is exactly true. And that's what Dawn uh, speaks with people about every single day. It's a community where you can get what you need when you need it. Um, and we can accommodate a very broad spectrum of those needs as adults are aging. You bring back a, something. Uh, I remember that I was part of the states talking about the elder. They talk, called about the elderly, and they wanted my opinions on things. I said the first thing, there was a Department of Elderly Affairs. you got to change that. Mm-hmm. It's got to be a Department of Elder Affairs, mm-hmm. and it is today. Yeah. Because elderly is such a negative term, and just by saying elders, because we know that we respect elders. So, I mean, it's just what you were saying, Don. They got to, I mean, you know, uh, Andrea, that you really have to think in terms of what an older adult wants to be known as. And and it's funny. We also used to have, our magazine used to be Senior Life. And people, then when Boomers came in, we said Senior Life and Boomer Times. They didn't want it Senior Life. They wanted to be Boomers. They could be 80 and they still wanted to be a boomer, right? That's right. So you're faced with that, aren't you, all oh. the time in your marketing? Yeah, we, you know, when we try to respect and honor that, we even, you know, an outdated term in our industry is simply activities. 
it's still a term that can be used, but maybe not as formally as it once was. People often think of old skilled nursing environments where there was an activities or director. You know, we have thoughtfully named our director, a director of lifestyle and leisure. Uh Uh-huh. I didn't know that. So there you go again. Yes. And our culinary team, it's not just a dining experience. It's truly a culinary experience. Our nurse is our director of health and wellness. You know, we try to encapsulate a broader concept than that, excuse me, traditional old senior living model. I'd like to be in your focus groups. I hear that you're doing a great job. So Dawn, um, you're celebrating almost, you're very soon to open. When do you anticipate that? Well, as Andrea said, we would love to see it open in June, but um, we really believe that residents will be moving in in July. We have done something, as you know, when you came to visit us, we were opening our Founders Club. And we're very, very proud to say that since uh, January, we have had a Founders event every month. So everyone that has put down a deposit and reserved an apartment to date has been meeting with each other, which has been so wonderful. So they've been making friends like these uh, two people Andrea just spoke of. They've been making friends every month with their neighbors-to-be and their children or spouses or significant uh, caretakers, loved ones, shall we say, has been bonding with each other at these Founders event each month. So we've had cruises on the intercoastal. We've rented movie theaters and all gone together. So smart. Uh, This month we're going to have brunch together at one of our wonderful restaurants in downtown Delray. But what we're doing in June for each of the Founders is going to have them one at a time with their family into the community to be able to see the beautiful building and see their apartment that they've had on uh, reserve, whether it be since December or just people that I signed up last night. So that's (laughs) going to be the wonderful Founders event for June and then hopefully move them into each and every one of their uh, homes Sounds in like July. Sounds like they're going to be spoiled rotten. That's Absolutely. What, that's, that's you have to have something else for it. Although spoiled rotten <laughs> people who live here, right? <laughs> Let me tell everybody when you're listening, we are, we are on Facebook Live, but Andrea Abbott is here, and she is the Regional Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Milestone Retirement Communities. It's the name of the, the, the company, actually. And then Dawn Gazetta, who is in charge of marketing, and sales for the wonderful symphony. Uh, symphony, I want to say the symphony. You're going to have to have a symphony. <laughs> <laughs> the symphony uh, community. And, uh, and and I know something else that you probably do, you don't talk about, but it's really important. Once somebody, all these people that are moving in, you do help them to move in, don't you? I mean, get, get there, because that's a, you know how traumatic. Look, for us to move is so traumatic. Yeah. So why don't you go over some of that? You You can probably do that in a generic way yeah your company does absolutely and dawn mentioned she's very deeply rooted in the delray beach community so she's made a great number of contacts given the nature of south florida and a lot of older adults who live here there are some extraordinary professionals who assist with everything to do with moving and so we have some great recommendations for anyone who needs a little bit of extra help Um, We make sure that they have the VIP experience getting into the community, getting their things set up. All of our apartments come unfurnished, which is fabulous. They can bring all of their favorite pieces of furniture and memorabilia from home to get settled in. And then there, like I said, there are many options for professionals to help sell a house or have an estate sale or move things to storage or box up and pack into our community. There are just so many options out there. And do you also have a, um, a special place if a family member comes down that they can stay for mm-hmm. the uh, in maybe a day or so? It really depends on the availability. If we continue gangbusters the way we are, we probably won't. Uh, But if we have availability, we often have a model apartment or a guest suite set up that they can use for that purpose. But right now, we are just on fire. So I don't anticipate having one of those very often. Yeah. And so and what about your other community? So we're talking about Delray and you have one in Boca. Do you ever get those people together? I mean, is there any relationship there? Yeah, and absolutely. I actually see there is a great opportunity between Boca and Delray Beach. A lot of the residents are coming from cross-pollinating, if you will, from both towns, depending on where their children live. 
Um, but I imagine we'll have some great get togethers from time to time, at least every couple of months. Um, we also have shared space during hurricanes. Um, we're really fortunate to be building at this time with Miami-Dade plus standard code. So our buildings are quite secure during storms. We have great plans laid in place. And during the 2017 storm, we actually relocated our Fort Lauderdale residents to a sister community in Stewart, Florida. So that unplanned get together turned out to be <laughs> very, very accommodating. And our residents had a luxury shelter, if you will, during the hurricane. They were safe. They were happy. They were having fun. So, What do you do about people? Uh, maybe, Dawn, you can answer this. What do you do about people who may have pets? Pets, are you able to accommodate that in any way? Well, we absolutely are pet friendly up until a certain weight. And as long as they have the ability to care for them or are willing to pay for a care associate to help them with the care, by all means. Yes. Do you and know 10 years ago you could never have answered that way? I know things have changed. No, I mean, seriously. Oh, yeah. And it really depends on the animal. One of our uh, most loved pets by the community in our Fort Lauderdale community is a golden retriever. So we typically stick to small pets, but occasionally there's just a really great pet that, you know, <laughs> is the love of the community and we make exceptions. You know, I can't imagine we'll ever have a Rottweiler, but, you know, you've seen exceptions here and there. So That makes me so happy. It gives yeah. me goosebumps because, you know, you're... As I say, I have been doing this a long time, and and some people were so uptight about the rules and regulations. I mean, I, even the place that my mother had been in, can't do this, you can't do that. And mm -hmm. I mean, it, I felt sorry, but I never voiced it because my mother was happy there. Uh, but you're right. You're really making them as though they're in their own home with, you know, n no restrictions that are unnecessary. That's what I like. Yeah. And, uh, and you feel it. I feel that from both of you that you're really caring loving people and fortunately you're you have the ear of the management which is really important absolutely it's a culture if you will i mean even though we have 92 communities we have a very strong and empathetic culture that believes in saying yes anytime that we can you know we make every accommodation to make someone comfortable and feel like it is their home so if we can do something small like allow them to bring their pet as long as it's within reason and everyone else is safe, that person is safe and others are happy, we'll absolutely do that. And, and we didn't mention this, but I'm sure you mentioned it, food being kosher, but some people do come with necessary food requirements. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure everyone is treated accordingly. Right. And, and I don't want to insinuate that we're a kosher community. No, we're not by any stretch of the imagination. But that's, some people want that. Right. But what, I want, what, what, what I'm pointing out is that our culinary, culinary director has experience across the board and um, can and hopes to accommodate people of all um, needs and exactly what you're talking about. If a doctor recommends a particular dietary need, that's exactly what we're there for. And you don't charge extra for any of that? No. No. No, I mean, so that's, that's you know, a lot of people will say, well, I can't go there because of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but that would be one thing if they're a diabetic or if they have some other, you know, re requirements. So that's good. So you're doing that now. Uh, what about physical therapy? Uh, we talked I'm about glad. we don't have activities. <laughs> <laughs> but do we have uh, exercise would be something, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. We have a physical therapy department mm -hmm. and room and full uh, staff there to do occupational speech and physical therapy. Mm -hmm. We have a gym. We have um, a beauty at salon and barbershop, manicure, pedicure chairs and massages available. We have an in-house movie theater where lectures and um, classes will also take place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are just so many options. We actually were looking at photos today of we have a 1969 cherry red stingray in the courtyard of oh, our really? memory support. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, no. that's, that's yeah. so funny where you ever got that yeah. from. So indoor, outdoor, there are plenty of things to do. We find there are a lot more men in our memory support areas of the community than there ever have been. You typically think of these communities having a lot of women, but men are really living longer and healthier. So we see a lot of men. Um, they and, recognize that stingray. Yes, and that's exactly the purpose. So we have that out there is not only some great eye candy in the courtyard, but also an opportunity <laughs> for some men to 
chat about their old cars. You can wash the car. We can, anything you want. It's it's out there for everyone to enjoy. So uh, you probably know we have a very big run our twentieth Boomer Expo, and I hope that you'll be able to bring. Uh, some of your residents, I don't know how many, you probably have a big bus that you can take them or yes. however, but mm -hmm. we hope that you'll be able to bring them to our Boomer Expo because it's extraordinary. And I'm sure you bring them to theater, you know, the Kravis Center. I see buses from other places, but mm -hmm. I, I really think it's important because then they don't feel like they're in one place all the time. Absolutely. And that's why Dawn mentioned our founders events. We've been up and running with the sales office for about eight months now prior to opening and uh, we do a lot of our events all throughout Delray Beach and even a little bit into Boca Raton just to integrate ourselves into the greater community. We want our residents to be aware that we'll be a part of not only Symphony at Delray Beach, but the community at large as well. Okay, and so now we'll just go over this. I want people to know how to get in touch with you. It's really, really important. So I'm going to give the phone number and information for Symphony of Delray. It's 561 266 Three four zero seven. That's the phone number to call and make an appointment. And you can go on web on the web to symphony at delray dot com. Symphony at delray dot com. Now you could be listening and not want to live in Delray. You may want to live in Boca. You may want to live in one of their other places. But they'll help you. But just remember, make this phone call before it's too late because they are really <laughs> racking up those things. So it's five six one two six five. So excuse me, two six six. 3407, and it offers, they call it Supportive Independent Living. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank Thanks. you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Anita, for having us.